I'm not sure it's going to make a difference. I'm just going to try on safe charge just in case. Interesting. Sounds kind of like Mega Man music. Oh, that's... Garish. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. I don't know. Please help, Mario. My entire island's covered in evil and suspicious mint chocolate coating. <laughs> okay, bye, Yoshi. <laughs> Alright, I wondered if that was what they were going for. It's got like a Christmas candy aesthetic. Cocoa Mint Corp. Ooh, Cocoa Mint. Alright, vertical up. First one of these I've seen. Um... Hmm. Oh, that's a pickup block. Danger. Avoid contact with hard light tracks. I have to assume that's the wall here. This is interesting. Oh. I presume I didn't want to do that. I guess there might be a vine or something. Mmm, and chocolate. Can we... Oh, no. Mint chocolate could be good. There we go. There's our vine. How you doing, Nintendo Ghost? You can smell this level. It's not often in a vanilla contest you can smell a level quite like this. Yeah, I gotta admit, when I saw the name, I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but this is pretty nifty, actually. They did a good job. Like, this wall, this, the whole building's nifty. I like the hard light thing. They went with a vertically oriented level, which is not a common choice in this contest. There's our candy canes. Ooh, background candy canes. Look at those. Some sort of wacky setups, too. Gotta get up. Avoid the chocolate ball. Oh, I should have I left the chocolate ball alone. I'm gonna make it. More leeway than I was expecting. No, I'm going. Chocolate sauce. It's very different than chocolate sauce. The ASM is the neat, real neat part. Uh, there's no custom ASM, right? This is the VLDC contest. So everything here is something you could have done in like vanilla Lunar Magic. Without needing any extra ASM. Unlike the last uh, thing I was playing, I was playing Marissa World. That needs a lot of ASM. This is just cute. Like, this is well executed. Oh, those kill you. He even mentioned that. I guess the real measure of this is gonna... is gonna be a lot around, like, how long the level is in proportion to what it delivers, because, like, this is a fun level. Um, I'm also not going... Oh. Alright, I have to go back up, because I waited too long. Uh, just what it delivers in proportion to how long it is, right? You can make a really cool level, but you can also make it way outstay its welcome. Especially one that has, like, constant setups. Oh. I was really hoping to hit that. Not that it matters in the slightest, but... And yeah, I'm just up here for the power-up. The Dragon Coin is incidental. around there. Gotta be making moves. I don't try to get the delicious chocolate truffle. Don't want the delicious chocolate truffle. Didn't even intend to land on that side, but it worked out. 
All right. What if we did solve Yoshi's problem of the horrible chocolate or the horrible big chocolate miasma? Like, will the world map change after we beat it? There we go. Okay. Now the platform falls. I'm not dead. Cool. I can go left or I can go right. Oh, let's try left. I guess this is like a backup in case you fall down or something. It's just a weird choice. Uh, oh, right. Okay, I don't go that way. I go underneath. I guess I should wait for the fuzzy to not be there before trying. Yeah, that's gonna kill me. And that's gonna fall. That's something. Okay, so what we've learned so far is this level's fucking long. The stuff I'm liking about it, but the instant death blocks, I have to say, I'm not a, I'm not very keen on for this part. Just because it's, you know, difficult to read that section where I was falling. One of the problems with doing, like, vanilla vertical levels is the camera can end up way, uh, like, not far enough ahead of Mario when he's falling to make, like, it easy to, uh, to see where you need to be jumping and stuff. One of the issues with uh, climbing the tower is. Oh, crap. Uh, climb the tower, which is a fun hack by Sweet Dude, but uh, the falling level is really rough because it is purely vanilla and the ca there's no like camera patch for it. Like, if those were just hurt blocks, I don't think we'd make the level any worse probably would make the level better. Wait. Okay. Alright, here we go. That hurt me? Okay, fine. I guess that's just the way it is. This looks like it could be a midway. Someone somewhere out there is saying, Got him. So busy trying to be careful, too. I felt very much like a classic troll level sort of thing to do. That's the first time I even saw that object in this level. On the bright side, at least it's not an ice level. You know, sometimes you just need levels that aren't ice levels. I'm kind of curious how many um, WLBC levels I have that remaining too. In the event that I ever run out of these. I gotta stop doing that. Bright side makes this part easier. I feel like Marissa World's got me trained to be looking for wall jumping opportunities, even in hacks where they don't exist. Could be wrong, though. Quick hand break. 
for a few seconds and then we'll go. Yep. Well, that's a new and interesting way to die. I'm really debating whether or not this one power-up is worth it. I'm not sure. It could be, but I'm not sure. It also takes a very long time to pay off. Soothing waves of jumps. Oh, I think there's actually just a place you can stand there where you'll be safe. Oh. Hello. Well, that's how you learn about these. Oh, that's how you get back up there. Okay. This is not as unkind as I thought it was. This is not where I'm supposed to try and get back up, but it's where I'm going to. <laughs> Alright. There we go. And that is a really, like, weird, awkward jump, but okay. I'm just gonna stand here and, uh, wait for the ball to pass. get hit by what I thought was a Torpedo Ted, but turned out to not be. Alright. Yes, Midway, thank you. This level's already starting to be... better. To the man who didn't notice. Okay. Didn't notice a chainsaw sticking through the platform. Alright. Diagonals. Oh, nice. That pipe. And auto scrolling. Oh, that is on the same layer. Crap. I'm in trouble like, telling what's going on in this level a little bit. Dang it. Always that one hammer. Always. satisfying to kill things. Oh, there were supposed to be four of them. Always satisfying to kill those things with, uh, with a brick. It doesn't feel like it should work, but it's excellent. Oh, there's level... Oh, that's what's going on. There's some layer two nonsense going on. That's what's confusing me. One thing, though, is that actually, even with the setbacks on, on the USB hacking for NES, I'm still excited to do it. It's been a while since I've had a project I'm, like, excited about working on. Okay, I'm not excited about hammers running into my face. But other than that, I'm excited. The Zelda 2 stuff. But I think I found something that's gonna make me pretty happy. It took a lot of, like, looking at code to get there, but... But I think it's gonna be nice. That's what I'm gonna do tomorrow.
And then, hey, three-day weekend. So. Oh, for fuck's sake. I just need to jump against the wall over there. Super Mario World would be greatly improved if you could spin jump on hammers. I'm just saying it now. Let everybody know the truth. It would be way better. There we go. Okay, I see how I got confused there. This is on a par parabolic motion curve thing. This looks like a sock. There's always a hammer where I don't want it to be. Okay, next time, wait until I see the ball thrower. He's a two thrower, so he shouldn't be hard to deal with. Like, pretty much whenever people have an option, they choose like six throwers. But two throwers aren't bad. Well, I got them all, but at what cost? Yeah, I was liking this level at first, but it's, it's a combination of things slightly getting to me. I always feel like Hammer Bros don't add a lot of fun to levels when they show up. One day I'll actually get past that. And here it's like really hard to tell what's solid and what isn't. Like really hard. Because when I was first playing it, I thought the area I was standing in there wasn't solid and I was going to fall through the floor. Still satisfied. Here, I thought I was being all clever. Okay, here we go. Let him throw his two. And block. And then fall off everything. I needed just to get one jump out of those two. That's not right. This is the beautiful thing about the LDC is those could only spawn once, but no, they can spawn twice. Good to know. Okay. I even thought that thing is going to be a bullet bill launcher. I should stand on it longer. Yeah, I think this has gone from being, like, fun setup -y level to there's an awful lot of RNG that I don't care for and just projectile spam. Like, the first half, I think, was pretty cool. Why is there a parenthesis in space over there? But the further I get into this... So I have to go a little bit faster than that. I do not have a choice.
It's a moderately fast scroll. Not the fastest, but it doesn't feel like one of the slower scroll speeds. There's clearly something there. Maybe I should give that a shot just to see what happens if you fall down there. That's the best I've ever done. Complete accident, of course, but you know. You be take those. Alright, there we go. Good odds we'll get to see a new part of the level. No, I said good odds, not great odds. bring a shell when provided. It's just a good call. That's a wall. Oh, hey. Like I said, shells. They're the smart move. Oh, I didn't expect him to turn! Oh, that was clever. How well, I would have done if I hadn't gotten hit by that ninja. I think finding Fire Flower would have been all that useful, but having a second chance at a hit, actually, with the speed, scroll speed as it was, probably wouldn't have made much of a difference at all. Now I think about it. Oh, yeah, I want to see. Oh, we're above the beginning of the. Oh, we're. We're just. We just went up. Huh. It's the same level. Didn't expect that. Really didn't expect that. Alright. Well, we're learning. It does make sense in a real, like, physical space sense. But it's just not what I was expecting when I saw this, like, J in space. Like three frames. Ah. Uh, okay. Use that to bounce over here. Go under the lava lotus. Bonk that. Go around. Get bonked. Forget about that. That's what I hate about Bullet Bill Spawners. You never know when they're going to do their thing. Something Nintendo changed in, like, later games, right? Like, in Mario Galaxy, you know when a Bullet Bill Spawner is going to go. But mostly because they're not an obstacle to be dodged. They're usually a tool to be used. Which is a very different thing in the grand scheme of, st of things. That was close. That was close. Hit. Two throw. Bounce. <laughs> okay. Just gotta calm down. Refine my center. Double check and see if this guy made Super Marissa World. He didn't. He didn't make Super Marissa World. I think I checked. It feels more in common with, uh, with all that. Oh. Every time I get hit there, I just die a little inside. Over here. Big jumps. Lava Lotus does its thing. Take the upper path, I feel like. Okay, well that happened.
nuts. I wanted that. Alright, well, I guess it didn't turn out to be that imperative. Yeah, murder is, is a far better weapon. Billabill launchers are rather rare. Do you think since Yoshi's Island, every billable little launcher sort of expands before firing? Shikari Mario does have a VLDC 13 entry. Really? That's terrifying. 35? That wasn't him, right? No, definitely not. Yeah, bulbul cannons like that are the reason for their rare use, as they were the sprite civet. Specific objects as well as unique as, as FX sprites. Huh. Good to know. How you doing, HeroSoft? Ugh. Now I'm curious and terrified. Yeah, there he is. He, in fact, did make the LDC 13 level. Holy cow. I'm certain it probably still had Toho characters. I'm just not certain. Or it probably still has Toho music, but can't have Marissa in it, so I don't know how that's going to work for him. One of those, like, I just keep going back to bad strategies when I just can't calm down. Unrelated, but why is so much stuff being uploaded to the hack section recently? I don't know. Um, I mean, some of it is just like, some people like to make small changes to their hacks, and that's a thing that happens sometimes. But I'd assume it's mostly because the volume of hacks in general has increased ridiculously over the last couple of years. Uh, both Kaizo and Standard, though more Kaizo, certainly. I'm a bit worried, given that we haven't had the queue anywhere near clear in a while. And partially my fault. At least I'm not helping things. Um, when uh, CLD, or CLDC, when um, C3 is just around the corner. And so that's a thing that's going to happen and re-up the queue for a bit. Even more full of random crap, because I imagine, like, Sakari's gonna come out around then. Daizo usually has something to show off. Um, there's probably, like, four other things that will, that might get a demo published or be a brand new standard hack. And that's just the standard stuff. The, the Kaizo stuff is also gonna come. I have no idea what's in the pipe there. Wouldn't surprise me if the jump team produced something for C3. So... Rip music waiting session. Oh, it's, it's already rip over there, isn't it? Like, what, there's like a thousand things waiting? Like, I don't know, I don't know what you do when you're doing music moderation, so, like, I can't rag on them or say they're doing an amazing job or any, anything of those sorts, but, like, that's still a lot. Like, I just don't know what goes into it is really the long and short. And things. Hold on the value of being small. Here we go. Get to keep that and I can use it for the next Koopa too. didn't improve the situation. Okay. Up pipes. Oh, the back, uh, the, the background's 100% confusing, in part because, like, uh, they're using some layer 2 scrolling stuff in addition to everything else. And, oh, man, that almost got me. I will admit, this is an interesting 
sort of set of, of, of setups. Gotta be careful that gold thing kills me in one hit if I let it give me. A thousand things waiting there so far. 300. Yeah. They have my sympathies. It's not a job I would wish for. What is expected of me here? Do I want to go up? I must want to go up. Oh god. This level has taken a turn for the sadistic. Like, oh man, I love the Christmassy, minty aesthetics, and then... You know what's great? Lots and lots of death tissues. Oh, Reznor. I wonder how much of the level I'm gonna have to play again. I don't remember hitting any, um... Yeah. Don't remember seeing any one-up spawn. No, I think I might just leave it here. I don't think I need to complete this level. Um, especially with Resnors that have bullets that are the same color as the background. A lot, indeed, turned out to be the right answer. But yeah, you can see why this background is weird, is because there are, in fact, multiple layers of scrolling. And that does not help the confusion. It makes the confusion even more real. There we go. Really? Oh, I guess it was slow enough that I could pick that up. Huh. Wing. Mario's going to the potluck and he's bringing a shell. Alright, well, didn't get to keep the shell as long as I wanted, but... No, it's okay. Just gotta wait for all of the cycles to line up. They're uneven, they'll line up eventually. Huh. <sighs> There's some really cool, like, uh, tile stuff that's happening here. Oh, come on! Uh, but still. Biggest brain teaser, at least, is what they add, uh, when they add that ceiling. Yeah, the ceiling is the hard part. Oh, that didn't instantly kill me. Interesting. I still think it would be nice if uh, he had added, like, a power-up prior to Reznor. This is not that bad once you do it. Good old Lava Swim, indeed. I can scarcely see those at some points. Good old Sonic 3 music. Of all the ways to die... Kill that Reznor. <laughs> Won't be bested by Fruit, Spike, or Moon, or Reznors. Okay. 
The top path here is clearly superior. the way to go, because you can just outrun the hammers. Alright. Never seen that happen before, but that was cool. That was far closer than it needed to be. I think I'll be fine. I don't need to have it line up that perfectly. What's up, Desi? Level looks incredible. It looks good. Um, it doesn't play as nicely as I was hoping. The, the first half had me uh, pretty excited, and then subsequently things have gone less ideal. And also, I kept thinking that the, uh, the, the tissue things here would kill me, but they don't. Well, this is disappointing. It's a U-shaped thing. I can work with that. I will read chat again in a second. Nope. Plenty of time. What's up, Hawaluta? Uh, gotta finish that. Uh, nah. Lurking and should be sleeping, but you can't get enough of this gameplay. Well, I'm glad somebody can't. Um, so, Desi, I have a thing to uh, at least let you know. Uh, I think I'm really, really close with the Zelda 2 thing. Um, basically, my plan is completely falling apart. Um, I had a plan to do sprite swapping live, and it's not going to work. Um, the EverDrive just has constraints such that I cannot make it work. Um, I have like one more Hail Mary on that, but I'm, I've come to the conclusion that it's unlikely to work. Um, I do have a couple other ideas, and there's one that came to me while I was looking at uh, the code today, and I think it shouldn't be too hard to implement. And so if it turns out to not be so bad, it should be good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's certainly an O. What's going on with USB to NES? Okay, so here's the deal. Ugh. Here's the deal. So the way that you're supposed to sort of handle USB to any NES is you handle it from inside the game. So basically the game strobes a serial port asking... God. Asking, does this work? Uh, is, is there something here? And if it says yes by returning, like, I think F0 or FF, um, it... Or no, it says FF. Uh, I have the code written properly. I forget what the actual return value is. Um, but then if it has that, then you can read data. The problem I'm having is there's a few other ways to manipulate things. So I can also write to CHR and theoretically to PRG and SRAM. But, in reality, it turns out that even reading from PRG causes the entire thing to hang. Like, quite literally, it just crashes the NES. Also, reading from SRAM causes it to completely crash the NES, at least for Zelda 2. And I think I can read from CHR, but who cares? It's CHR. Um, so, unlike the SD to SNES where I can mess with the ROM, I can't mess with the ROM here, like, at all. So that limits the possibilities, and I thought I could work with the CHR constraints and do something interesting, but I've it's failed. Every time I've tried to do something, even reading through CHR causes this to fail um, in weird and unpredictable ways. So I can change the sprite, but I can't change the palette. Or I can change the palette, but I can't change the sprite. Um, those are That's where I'm at right now, and I'm more tempted to leave the palette changes in there, because I think they're cooler than having a green version of uh, whatever the protagonist of Crystallis is and the like. Oh, I, I chose poor timing, so. Uh, bullet bill launchers are hitting the walls, yes. Uh, does SMB1 work with it? I don't know. The thing is, I have to write patches for each individual game, and I can't patch them on the fly. Um, so, the answer is kind of no, not in the way that we do things on the SNES side. Um, so if I want, if we want to do chat hacks of a Super Nintendo, of a Nintendo game, basically first I have to find some space 
some free space in a bank that's likely to be loaded. Hook NMI. Um, and then uh, go from there. And then I'll also need, like, some free RAM to write the command stuff to. Um, actually, I guess actually I could probably get away without free RAM. I think about it. But it would be limited to, like, one byte writes at a time. No, no, I actually would need... I would need free RAM. I can't get away with that. Because there's no 16-bit registers. Either way, it's, it's been a lot of work. And it hasn't paid off yet, which is the most disappointing part. But I gave myself to the 15th to have a good prototype done, and we'll see. It's pissing me off. Um... SMB1 read CHR ROM to get the tile map for the tile screen. Um, I think when I messed with CHR, it wasn't during that period. So when I beheaded Mario, it was during gameplay, and that's why it worked is because it's not is because it's not reading through uh, the PPU to get CHR data. Um, and subsequently, as long as the CPU doesn't want it, if only the PPU wants it, it works. But if you're trying to get CP uh, PPU data through to the CPU, then it crashes horribly. And I don't know why. And I don't have the tools to debug it because I don't have the source for it. Um, and so that's sort of where I'm at. I have one more thing I can try on the CHR side. Uh, I could try seeing if the newer OS version works better because I switched to uh, uh, from like 2.14 to 2.11 under the idea that maybe that would make a difference. Um, I don't think it does. Or at least I don't think he's made significant changes such that it actually makes a difference. But yeah. Oh, there goes my shell. I haven't actually successfully done this part without a shell, I think, but it doesn't matter too much. But for this many times through this, you'd hope I'd at least have learned a thing or two. Wait a second. So, what I do have, and thanks to Fiskbit, is I have a way to attach to. Um, well, thanks to Fiskbit, he handed me like the assembler and uh, du jour to do this sort of thing. So now I'm using Snarf Blasm to hook NMI to do certain things, and I have a couple ideas of cool things to do one remaining that is actually feasible and can implement in less than a day, I think, as long as I... as long as it works. But reading the code, I think it should. I have to do an initialization to SRAM, but I think that other than that, it should be fine. I don't think that the specific uh, bit of code is used until after the title screen, so it should be fine. <laughs> um, should be fine. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'll catch up. I guess I should just catch up on chat. Ugh, give me a sec. Just mentioned before that some of the work uh, you have would be expected to be universal for NES games. It's going to need to be done manually for each and every ROM. D. The Fort's also written something about this when it came to crowd control. Yes, I saw D. The Fort's article. Uh, that was actually very helpful. Um... Or is the rest of the terminology Pat was saying, like PRG or not? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Snarf's name is familiar. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Snarf Blaster was looking into um, SMI to initialize the SRAM. Oh, a subspace clam. I was briefly confused by your terminology. Uh, shooters at this level are always two shooters per cannon, Desi. Some go behind the background walls. And they start. Oh, okay. That does explain why it looks that way. He also started a good Metroid hack you played once. Oh, I didn't know that. Article you want to, is referring is the one you're referring to. Yeah, I spent some time trying to find any useful technical information, and beyond that, and one file that's in um, the repo for the EverDrive OS stuff, uh, there is no useful technical information out there on how that's supposed to work. Thankfully, it's simple, but like, Chris has not gone out of his way to make it easy for people to pick this up and dev with it. Um, 
Um, same thing with the OS. Like, the OS used to be available on GitHub to, for perusal, and I was looking at that, which was helpful at certain times, though mostly just a big red herring. Um, and he just took it down, I don't know why. Like, he basically deleted it, but the thing is, is, you know, you put it on GitHub, it's not deleted, it's still there, it's just on an older revision. So, at least there's that. But my current working theory with that, all, all that nonsense, is that um, unlike the SD to SNES, where there's some sort of uh, port arbitrator or something, there's nothing like that going on on the NES side of things. So what I think is happening is it's just locking the RAM uh, and uh, privileging the writes and reads on the TRGs uh, on the other side. So basically, it ends up returning garbage to the You know, I never considered this, but I could just jump on this guy. There's nothing stopping me from just jumping on him. I was so enamored with my solution to that problem. Huh, you can't kill those things that way. One second. Oh. Oh, gotcha. Um... So yeah, that's my working theory. Whether or not it's true, I would, only Chris knows. Like, I could figure this out theoretically if I, like, borrowed Snyder's logic analyzer, got my own logic analyzer, and spent some time learning how to use a logic analyzer, and hooking it up to said logic analyzer. Oh, thank you for the follow! Um, but I, I don't, I don't want to do that. So, we're gonna go with the compromise. It's not as good, but I think it'll come together really quick, and it'll be something of interest. Um, and I, I have one Easter egg already in mind that I think you'll like, Desi. Like, a really decent Easter egg. Oh, come on. There we go. Just don't die to Resnor. That's all it takes. Returning garbage, yeah. Um, even, in fact, what, one thing I did notice, I'm pretty sure, is that trying to read from SRAM also corrupted the SRAM, which just makes everything worse. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs>